Gunfire shattered a temporary truce in Khartoum, the capital of Sudan, on Saturday morning. The Sudanese army had agreed to a special three-day ceasefire on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr. However, violence between the army and the paramilitary force has resumed in violation of the call. Now, fighting in Sudan's capital enters its second week today. The army has deployed for the first time on foot in the streets of Khartoum. Plumes of smoke can be seen across the Khartoum skyline. Amid the ceasefire violations, Sudanese citizens celebrated a somber Eid. Overnight, heavy explosions that had subsided as a response to the truce have now resumed. Hundreds across the nation have been killed and thousands left wounded in the power struggling between the paramilitary forces and the army troops. ولكن الحمد لله الامارات وكله بيرد ربنا سبحانه وتعالى ولكن برضو لا لا بد من انه كان الحاصل اللي كان يحصل لانه بلد بالراسين ما كان بيمشي يعني ما اصلا جيشين ما بيمشوا بلد ونحن طبعا مع قوات الشعب المسلحه اصل بلاد شنو يعني قوات الشعب المسلحه والشعب يعني citizens in the capital have taken to fleeing from the violence even as the military shut down access points between Khartoum and its sister cities of Omdurman and Bari. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the power struggle has ignited a massive exodus of Sudanese into neighboring countries. Between 10 to 20,000 Sudanese have fled to Chad since the fighting started. اطلع يعني ما 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 عندها معنى انك تقعد في الخرطوم يعني كون انت تقعد تقول انا قاعد في بيتي انا امن انت ما امن even as the violence in khartoum continues countries across the globe are scrambling to get their citizens out of sudan seoul and tokyo have confirmed that they will be sending military aircrafts to evacuate south korean and japanese nationals from the country Spanish Air Force planes are also on standby to evacuate 60 Spanish nationals. Sweden confirmed that plans to evacuate its embassy workers and their families are currently underway. The United States, however, seems to be on the bench regarding evacuating its citizens. Due to the uncertain security situation in Khartoum and the closure of the airport, it's currently not safe to undertake a U.S. government-coordinated evac. Uh, Americans should have no expectation a USG-coordinated evacuation at this time, and uh, we expect that's going to remain the case. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Mohamed Alamin, who is a journalist from Sudan. Thank you for being with us on this broadcast. Now, violence between the army and the paramilitary forces has resumed. This, of course, in violation of that 72-hour ceasefire. What are the latest details that you have for us from the ground? Uh, yes, uh, actually, the, the, the clashes are ongoing, and uh, this truce has not uh, hold anymore, actually. Uh, you know, the two sides, the two warring parties, the Sudanese Armed Forces and the Rapid Support Forces have declared a 72 hours uh, temporary ceasefire. Uh, so, but uh, they do not implement it, actually, because now, uh, today, the fighting is ongoing in different parts of Khartoum. It's spread even to uh, new places, like the twin cities of Khartoum, which is uh, Bahri and uh, Umdurman. They are fighting also around the army headquarters, and there is a fight in, uh, near the presidential palace as well. So, basically, the, the truce uh, has not been implemented, it has not fought. Uh, we can say that the situation is, in the end, the scale of fighting is not like yesterday, uh, but it's still ongoing. So the two sides are violating the, the ceasefire so far. Right. And Mohammed, in terms of the humanitarian situation, there are tens of thousands fleeing the violence. 
this is surely likely to cause a humanitarian catastrophe in Sudan. Uh, yes, actually, the humanitarian situation is quickly deteriorating. Uh, thousands of people have fled the, 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 the capital Khartoum to the neighboring states uh, to, to, to stay in safer place and also to get uh, better services uh, in terms of electricity, in terms of, uh, of medicines. All the hospitals have been attacked as well. Uh, there is no water. Uh, and due to the cut of the electricity now for like four or five days in some areas, you know, the bakeries and all the stations, everything is not working. So the people are uh, very, uh, they are suffering a lot, you know, and the people cannot go outside because they are afraid. They cannot go outside because they are afraid of the firing. So the people are staying indoors, uh, afraid of, 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 of being attacked if they go outside. Uh, home. So, and uh, yesterday, I think it's also related to the humanitarian that the diplomatic missions in Sudan have uh, have permission to uh, evacuate their uh, their diplomats from the country. So, uh, some uh, and the the two sides, the very party staff and uh, RSF, said that uh, in the coming hours they will open uh, the airport maybe to uh, let them move. Uh, so, and uh, what I know also that uh, the Western countries, the United States, UK, and some European uh, countries, United Nations as well as China, uh, they uh, offer to bring uh, military planes to evacuate their uh, nationals and their, and their diplomats. Uh, so the only countries that succeeded to evacuate its nationals and its diplomats is Saudi Arabia, uh, that they uh, travel to Port Sudan, you know, it's a coastal city on the Red Sea, uh, and then uh, take the sea to the to the to the Saudi Arabia. Uh, so the the, 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 the the foreigners are fleeing, the Sudanese are fleeing, the country, the Sudanese are fleeing, the capital, and the situation is deteriorating. And we expect even that uh, after this 72 hours uh, truce uh, finish. The war will go into back more aggressively because what we hear that the two sides are, are using these 72 hours to reorganizing and to repositioning themselves, so in order to back to the war more aggressively. Right, Mohammed, thank you very much for your time and bringing us all the latest details coming out of Sudan. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.